Hey everyone out there in internet land, Sean Frangella here again for sjanimate.com with another new tutorial on Element 3D version 2. So in my previous two tutorials, I went over some of my top features as well as integrating with Cinema 4D. So be sure to check those out if you didn't already. And in this one, I really want to go over some of the new shortcuts and workflow tips inside of Element 3D that really help to speed up workflow. So we'll go over a lot of those and then I'll conclude with how we could put all those together to do something really clever inside of After Effects like what we have here where using some of these little tips we can take our 3D objects, snap the plane of focus on the camera to a specific point that follows along an object and even link stuff like optical flares or particles or any 3D object. So one of my favorite things about working in After Effects is that there's lots of shortcuts for doing every sort of thing to work quicker, whether it be with cameras, lights, working with the timeline, keyframes, you can just work really fast with a lot of shortcuts. If you get used to the process and then you can focus on the creative part rather than moving the mouse around and looking for what you wanna do. And along with all the other cool stuff in version two of Element 3D, one really useful workflow feature is inside of our scene setup, there's a lot of new shortcuts that were added that can really help to speed up your workflow. So let's go over those from the beginning. In After Effects, I'll make a new composition with Command N. And as we're doing this, I'll just point out all the shortcuts we're using, and then you could integrate those into your workflow and get a lot more work done quicker. And I'll just call this E3D, and then I'm gonna make a new solid with Command Y, and I can call that whatever I want. And then I'm gonna go over here and grab Element, and that's how we'll get our Element 3D effect on here. And then we'll go to scene setup. And now inside scene setup, as I mentioned, there's a lot of little things you can do to make this quicker. So we'll just grab some objects over here from motion design two. And I'll go down to these tubes and pipes and grab some of these. So once we start adding some things, I'll add this pipe and this group of bended pipes and just another pipe. Now that we have everything in here, there's a lot of additional shortcuts that you can use to arrange the objects quickly as well as the texture. So I'll just go through those from the top. The first thing you'll probably notice is rather than the camera, there's the camera and our little selector and move, scale, rotate. So with these inside of one group, which is just a folder of 3D parts, on any of them we can move, scale, or rotate the group or the parts. And the shortcuts for those are W for move, E for rotate, and R for scale. And there's some additional shortcuts while we're using those. On an object, if we're moving and we hold shift, we can snap to our grid, as well as if we're rotating with E and hold shift, we can snap to 45 degree angles while we're rotating. And those are just the basics. Now that we have a grid and different views up here, there's also a lot of shortcuts for these things, such as shaded at wireframe. If we wanna hide and show our grid, we can do that by pressing G. If we wanna hide and show our environment, which is right here, rather than checking that on, we can press N. And that's gonna show up whatever we have loaded for our HDRI image map. So if we change that out, it'll be a different one. So G and N will hide and unhide those. If we wanna change our shading mode on that object, we can press F and they will change automatically up here from wireframe to shaded. If we wanna hide that object that we have selected, we can press D and you can see it's hiding that. And if we had a group selected, it would hide and unhide that whole group. And if we somehow get the camera kind of off, we can always press Z to center that. So those are some really useful ones between G for grid, N for environment, F for wireframe and shaded view, D for hide and unhide, and Z for center the camera. That can really help to speed this up. And after we get a couple objects, there's some additional ones for not just moving, but making copies. So let's say we wanted a couple copies of this bended one, rather than going over here and even doing right click duplicate all, we can press command D and it will duplicate it. If we switch this from camera to our selection tool, then we can grab our objects right in the viewport. And then if we want to duplicate it, we could press command D and you can see it duplicates it. Or we can hold option and drag and it'll drag out a copy exactly in the direction that we're dragging it. So that can be a really useful way if you have a bunch of things and you wanted to make multiple copies. You can just hold Option or Alt on Windows and then start to drag and really quickly organize your scene. And of course you can undo and redo with Command Control Z, Command Shift Z to redo. So very quickly you can get a lot done. 
Now let's say that we do duplicate a couple of these. I'm gonna grab that center bended group, press Command D to duplicate it, and I'll drag it up and just press E to rotate it and then hold Shift to rotate it 45 degree angles. Now we're starting to have a lot of objects here and if we twirl each of these down, they each have all of their materials. And it, eventually if you twirl down enough, you can see that it takes up more than our whole little group and that's fine, you can twirl all those down and do this, but that's kind of annoying and slow. So one nice thing is there are shortcuts for all of these beyond just turning them on and off. Over here in our scene view, at any time, if we use the up and down keys, we can move between object. If we press M, it will twirl down each of those. And if we press Shift M, it will actually twirl down all of our objects. And then we can use the arrow keys to go up and down. And of course, now we can see that there's a bunch of objects with many materials. And it takes a little while if we wanted to go all the way down. So there's shortcuts when you have everything expand it out to a snap between just objects by holding command or control and a up or down arrow. And then we could just close all of these again real quickly. So we could hold command and down arrow, command and down arrow, and just keep pressing M. And again, of course, you could use M to expand, collapse those. So that can be a really quick one if you want to, without having to go all the way over to that damn mouse, quickly collapse, look through your materials, and really organize this. Now, if we have each one of these opened, we can, by clicking these little check boxes, turn on or off objects, groups, and materials. And if we have a bunch of objects like we have here, if we hold Option or Alt, you can see it shows Mute Toggle. And what that'll do is we'll turn off all objects besides that one. And if we're on a material, it'll turn off all objects behind that. So holding Option or Alt on Windows is another quick little one to isolate our objects. So there's a lot of good little shortcuts between expanding and collapsing objects and materials and moving around with arrow keys in our scene window that will really help save some time. Now, let's say we have these all opened and we want to add some materials. There's some updates to those as well. So let's take a look at this one. If we go to some of our materials and let's look at Pro Shaders 2 and go to Metal, if we have the group selected and drag it on, if we have an object selected, we can drag it onto each of these to replace a material, or we can drag it onto that specific part and it will replace that material. And you can see that it's kind of hard to select that one, so that might be a case where we wanted to do this. And if we wanted to actually just replace all materials in the viewport, we also have the option now of if you hover over it and hold Option or Alt on Windows, you can see on the right, it highlights all of them. So if you have an object selected and want to replace all materials, you can hold Option, drop it on, and you can see it replaces all of them. And that's not what I want to do, so I can undo that. But it's a nice little shortcut that you can drag them on here or here or hold Option or drag to the groups to replace all and we can turn back in our environment. And some last little things when we're navigating around here, this is our camera, and if we drag the mouse, that's gonna orbit around. The arrow key will select things, but if we're in this mode and we still wanna orbit, we can hold Option and orbit around. And if we wanna adjust our lighting that's coming from our background, we can switch back to our camera view and hold Shift and drag, and you can see it's orbiting our lighting around. So there's some nice little shortcuts depending on which mode you're in here. And the nice option of if you're in this selector and you still wanna kind of orbit around, you can go that way. Now let's build something out of these. What's nice is a lot of these line up and let's focus on these bended groups. I'll just delete each of these, which we can do by clicking the delete button. And now say we had all of these and we just want them to line up exactly. What we can do is go to different views. Let's say we go to our front view and I can zoom in and again, I can grab both of these and then command D to duplicate. And now what I can do to exactly line these up is look at this grid. And as I'm moving them over E for rotate, I hold shift and rotate on 45 degree angles and then press W and I can move them. And to make sure they're exactly lined up, I can hold shift and that's going to align to the grid lines. You can see that it exactly lines those up. So looking at different views and holding shift can be useful. And the last little thing that's useful for organizing these and being able to control them is you can see if I grab each of these, it defaults 
the anchor point to the center of the object. And that's usually what you want, but sometimes you want it to rotate from a different point. Let's say we wanted each of these to actually rotate from here or somewhere else. That's what this little axis lock is for. Right now, if we move or rotate, it moves the object. If we turn that on, you can see it lights up orange, and then we can actually move the axis points. And then if we turn that off and rotate, it will rotate around that. So that's something that's really useful in 3D animation if we want something to actually rotate not around its center point, but around a different point. And then I'll just undo those. So now we have this nice little 3D object that's made from this little group, and you can see it lines up really nicely. And we could really quickly organize and adjust this using a lot of these really nice shortcuts. So I'll go to OK, and there's even a shortcut for this. If you just press Command Enter, it'll press the OK button for you. So that'll save you some time going all the way up to the top. And now that I'm back in my main view, what we can do is make a camera with Command Shift Option C, and I'll just leave that camera one. And then I can press the C key to orbit around this. Now, to top this off with some extra little trickery, one of the best points of Element 3D is it works with our camera properties. So on our camera, if we press AA, it shows all of our camera properties, including depth of field, which we can check on. And you can see that opens our depth of field, which really helps to make this cinematic. And what we can do is turn up the aperture, which will make the plane of focus tighter and out of focus objects more out of focus. And then we can change the focus distance to get the object we want to in focus. However, you can see manually doing this is kind of a pain because you have to try and find it. And on Element 3D, you can output our focus and then try and find it. But there's an even quicker way to do that. What we can do in Element 3D is go down to Utilities and under Generate 3D Position, click this and then click on a point on our 3D model. It's going to pick up that position and then go to Generate and it's going to create a null. And we can use this to control our depth of field. So now we have this 3D null. What we can do is grab our camera and our null and right click camera set focus. And you can see that that's going to make that exact point in focus. So now if we turn up our aperture, no matter how high it gets, that point is always going to be the exact point that's the most in focus. And now if we wanted to actually link that to the object, say we want to move that object around, what we could do is on our element 3D layer for this group, that's these objects. There's group utilities, and we can go to create group null, and I'll click create. And that's gonna create a null down here that we could use to move around our object and rotate it. So that would move our object and rotate it. And now that we have this group null, what we could do is parent that to this position, which is this, this 3D position. And rather than setting our focus distance, if we select our position and hold shift grab the camera and then right click camera link focus distance what that's going to do is add this expression that you can see it's turned on in red to our camera focus distance so it's always lining itself up at that point so now if i orbit the camera around by pressing c or move in closer or further you can see that this is keeping in focus even though i'm moving the camera or the object and if i animated any of those objects it would still stay in focus and these little tricks can be really useful because we can snap anything to it, say if we wanted to add optical flares or a particle emitter or anything with an XYZ position in After Effects, we can also parent and shift parent it to that. And I plan on putting together another follow-up video about all of these little tricks and hints to connect flares and shift depth of field and all the stuff we can do in Element 3D and a bunch of little tips and tricks like that that we can do between Element 3D and After Effects to really connect things and do things with cameras and really take advantage of some little tips we can do. So be sure to look out for that video next and be sure to check out the other two videos I've put up so far on some of my top features as well as working between Cinema 4D and Element 3D because you can really do a lot with version two of this plugin. And if you want to grab this scene file that I've been putting together, head on over to Facebook and check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash vital and like the page, send me a message or just comment on the page and I'll send you the scene file that you can play around with and learn from what I've been showing off between all of these new features in my various tutorials. And if you want to ask questions on Twitter, you can Find me at twitter.com slash Sean Frangella and be sure to subscribe on youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. I really appreciate subscribing and following a lot of my tutorials on 3D motion graphics, animation, and design. 
So follow me on whichever social network you use. And as always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video.